G'day guys, we've got a physics question here today which was taken from last year's university entrance exams. Um, so what we have here specifically is like a kinematics slash um, a circular motion style question where we've got a student is conducting an experiment by tying a rubber stopper to a string and swinging it in a horizontal circle as shown in the diagram below. The stopper has a mass of 0 0.123 kilos and the distance along the string from the pivot to the center of mass of the stopper is one3 or three meters. So the first thing we've got to do is on the diagram draw and label the forces acting on the stopper. We've got to show that the tension in the string is 3.29 newtons and we've got to calculate the speed of the stopper. So to start with with part A of this question what we the way I think about this is if the string were to snap where would the stopper go? Well the stopper is going to go down it's going to fall because of gravity, and it's also going to go outwards. It'll fling outwards because of this centripetal acceleration that you get from swinging an object in a circle. So basically, we have to figure out, well, what forces are going to make it do that, and what forces are stopping it from doing that at the moment? So the way I like to do part A is I like to uh, figure out, well, what's going to happen to that center of mass if the string breaks? And basically what we can say is the that cork is going to fall down because of gravity and it's going to fall outwards due to centripetal acceleration. So what it is what is keeping that cork there or the rubber stopper is the tension in the string and we've also got the force of gravity that's on it. So the first um, force that we have is the force of tension in the string that we have between the pivot and the center of mass. So we have this force here. And the second force, which we always have in most of these kinematics questions, is the force that's acting due to gravity. So what we're going to do now is, from here, we've now got to show that the tension in the string is 3.29 newtons. Okay. So first of all, let's work out what the force of gravity is, because basically the vertical component of the force of tension has got to be equal to the force of gravity if we are going to keep it in this particular um, frame of motion. If it's not going up and down, it means that the force of tension, the vertical component, will equal um, the force of gravity. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the force of gravity first. So we're going to go force of gravity is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which is equal to 0 0.123 multiplied by 9.8 meters a second. And that is equal to 1.2054 newtons. Cool. So now what we've got to do is we've got to have a force of tension down this wire here that is going to create a vertical component that is equal and opposite to this force of gravity which we've just calculated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another little force triangle here. So if we've got this force of tension going down here we're also going to, this is going to create a force triangle like this. with this side of the triangle going to have to be the opposite of the force of gravity because it's going to be acting upwards. Cool, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just work out a few other components of our triangle. We know that this angle is going to be 68.5 degrees. And we also know that this Fg is going to have to be equal to that. So what we can say, we've got the hypotenuse we're looking for. And we've got at the adjacent, that's
Okay, so now we're going to work through a couple of more components with our triangle. First of all, we've got this right angle here, and we also can we also know that this part of our triangle, this angle here, is equal to 68.5 degrees. Cool. So what we're looking for is FT is our hypotenuse. We know our adjacent side. So we're going to use a little bit of trigonometry here where we're going to have the cosine which involves adjacent and hypotenuse. So the cosine of the angle is going to be equal to the hypotenuse and the force of gravity. So the force of gravity divided by the hypotenuse. So 1.2054 divided by x. So we can say then that x is equal to 1.2054 divided by the cosine of 68.5 degrees and that is equal to 3.2889 which is approximately equal to 3.29 newtons. Cool, so that's B under control. Now we've got to calculate the speed of the stopper. All right, so for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to first of all work out our horizontal radius. So we're going to calculate what this radius is here. So we've got this radius. So this radius here, we know that this here is 1.43 meters and we know that this angle here is 68.5 this is the opposite side let's just call this uh, angle this is the R so angle well, well side R this is the opposite of the hypotenuse we've got the sine we can just go R is equal to 1.43 times the sine of 68.5 which is equal to 1.33 meters cool so let's write that down Okay, so for part C, the way that this is going to work is we've got a centripetal acceleration or a force that is due to its centripetal acceleration which needs to be balanced or the horizontal component of the tension needs to be equal and opposite to the force of the centripetal acceleration. So what we have to do first is we have to find out the horizontal component of this force due to tension. So we know to start with that the force due to tension is equal to 3.29 newtons. Now basically what we have to do is we have to work out this side of the triangle here. Let's call it A. So 3.29 is going to be our hypotenuse we are looking for the opposite side of this 68.5 degrees. So what we're going to do is to find that we're going to go the, the horizontal component of this um, tension force is equal to 3.29 times the sine of 68.5 and that is equal to 3.061. Cool. And now this has to be equal to the centripetal acceleration or the centripetal force that we get from 
the revolutions of this rubber stopper. So what we're going to do then is we're going to work out the centripetal acceleration by going FC, which we know is going to be equal to 3.061, is equal to MV squared over R. We know M, we know R, we know FC. So we know that 3.061 is going to be equal to 0 0.123 times V squared divided by the radius, which is 1.33. So we can say that if we rearrange this, we can say that V squared is going to be equal to 33.1 and as a result V is equal to the square root of 33.1 or V is equal to 5.75 meters per second Cool. So basically, guys, the way that we figure these out is to just to make sure that we always use this angle here. We're always going to take our measurements using this angle. We're not going to try and find the other one. You just have to try and um, rearrange or exchange sine and cosine for um, whatever triangle you're going to need to so guys, this is a relatively complicated question. The tricky parts are, are, I would say, is making sure that you get the correct uh, trigonometric ratio for calculating each of your uh, forces and um, distances and all these kind of things. And after that, just remembering what all your formulas are. Equal, uh, but if you're anything like what we have in Western Australia, you'll have some kind of formula sheet that um, you know the examining body will give you. So you can refer back to that if you need to. It's just understanding how to manipulate each of the formulas. But in the case of this question, we just had to make sure that we calculated like a particular force and then we were able to calculate its equal and opposite. So that's how most of these questions are solved. We these kinematic questions have a force that we know and the unknown force can be solved by using some kind of um, variation on the equal and opposite force to keep this particular thing in a constant motion. So I hope this video helped guys. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Um, I put out new videos all the time. Um, subscribe to my channel. And um, yeah, I hope to see you next time. Enjoy your physics.